Mm -hmm. Here's that cord blockage where it's starting to rot, mm -hmm. which is holding. That's, How far down is that? Uh, we're about 15 feet. 15 feet that way? Yeah. So almost outside. Roughly. There's roughly about, on average, about 25 to 30 foot of iron pipe under the house before mm -hmm. it goes outside. Look at the bottom left of the monitor. Mm -hmm. It says zero degrees. That's the slope of the pipe. Mm -hmm. You know, we want negative slope because water rolls downhill. When we're flat and it's just sitting there, that's why it's gurgling because it's forming a blockage because the pipe has nowhere to go. Okay. Mine says plus one. Now it's zero again. Yep. So it's going to fluctuate. Anytime you see. So currently there's no water being ran in the house, but when the pipe's full of water, uh -huh. that's not good because that's that pipe that's rotted and it's full of that core blockage. We got more tissue. See how the pipe looks different in the distance? Mm -hmm. and we're leaving the inside of the home and we're going outside into what's called clay, a clay pipe, a terracotta pipe. So no blockage in there? So far out here, uh, it doesn't appear to be. some tree roots coming up here about 55 foot you see those in the sides of the pipe mm -hmm. so those also will cause blockages the only tree out there is very new and very small these have been growing for a while especially these guys right here you see uh -huh. them growing down on the sides of the pipe so tree roots can enter from your neighbor's yard across the street and they will do deadly damage to get to the water to, to eat. There's a tree root growing in right there. Or no, mm -hmm. what is that? Looks like a crack in the side of the pipe right there. Hmm. Kind of see how it looks like there's a piece just missing out of the side of it? Uh huh, I thought that was a root. It kind of looks like a root, but the more I look at it, it kind of looks like just like a little gash missing out of the pipe. That seems unlikely, doesn't it? It does, but when, so uh, clay sewer lines, they're given a life expectancy of up to 30 to 40 years. Mm -hmm. So if the home's older than that, you can start to see. <laughs> and we're now about at 50. Okay. Just short of 50. So I'm replacing a lot of stuff. Ultimately, yeah. yeah to, to not have any issues, you would have to replace a lot of stuff, yeah. Aside from the tree roots out here in the on the exterior portion, mm -hmm. we've got a little bit of some water that's just kind of chugging along. Okay, let's see. There's the 
there's your city connection, 97 foot. So aside from the tree roots out there and that, it, whether it be a root that's curving or a crack, the outside portion's in fairly good condition. So that could wait. Yes. Your problem is the stuff inside that's giving you issues. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a, your issue that you're experiencing, it's not a traditional blockage like tree roots fully sealed the pathway for the line that just need to be unclogged. Your issue is, it's a volume issue. This pipe, when this house was built, and this iron pipe was built with grade, so it had good slope, mm -hmm. but 50 years later, that grade kind of flattens as it settles, and that iron pipe is now flat with no slope, so mm -hmm. when water sits on that iron pipe, it starts doing that core rot thing, and it just eats away at the pipe. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're having your issue. Okay. The, the only way that you can get rid of that issue with the pipe being so full of water mm -hmm. is you have to cut up the floor and replace it, unfortunately. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And that's something you guys can do? Yeah. We have a total of six crews that specialize in that. Okay. I'm one of them. Sometimes they do it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my area of expertise. I'm, I'm very good at cutting up someone's floor and replacing a poop pipe. So... Um, timeline wise, especially with it gurgling how bad it was when we were here, um, as far as like open volume for water, you don't have the room to run a large volume of water. So I wouldn't do laundry. I wouldn't do, um, I wouldn't run your dishwasher if, if you wash dishes in the dishwasher. I would just flush the toilet, try to minimize the amount you use it. Because uh, anytime you discharge a large volume of water, that's when it's going to start coming up. So how long does it take to do that? It takes about one full day. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. How long does it take to schedule it? A couple days. Uh, something like this. Is today Monday or Tuesday? Today's Monday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like this, we're looking at tomorrow or Wednesday to get it done for you. Okay. I could do it Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, so we can do Wednesday. Yeah, maybe Wednesday in case it takes more than a day. It, it, I, I can promise you it won't. Uh, our crews are very skilled. Mm -hmm. um, we have one gentleman. Uh, so my expertise is the jackhammer. I'm very quick <laughs> at cutting the concrete. And, like, in all honesty, it'd probably take about an hour and a half to cut up all the concrete. It's going to take a couple hours to pull out all that messy pipe and mm -hmm. to seal it up and to transport it outside so we don't make a mess. And then after that, it goes super quick. The reason being, we're bringing an all new clean pipe and we're just building a brand new sewer line. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you just start pouring back concrete. Yeah. So it's a very quick process. Um, now, of course, you know, we do pour back concrete. As far as rolling up carpet and finished flooring, like in the bathroom right here, that's something that we don't do, unfortunately. Right, but you can take it up. Yes, so as okay. far, I meant as far as replacing. Um, right. Yes. Yeah, I figured that much. I just hoped I didn't have to have somebody come in and take it up. No, we, like I said, oh, the plumbers, we're very good at demoing things to get to them. We're just, <laughs> you put a, you put, you know, drywall and, you know, plaster in front of us we're kind of stuck we don't know how to make things look pretty I mean, uh -huh. that's kind of where we struggle <laughs> now will the pipe still be flat no so what we do we so we dig the trench a little bit deeper than the pipe currently is uh -huh. um and once we do that picture um it's a special kind of gravel that we put under the pipe. Mm -hmm. The reason we do that is it gives, it, it prevents the pipe from having the chance to flatten back out or settle. Um, and we put um, about 12 inches of gravel under the pipe and about six inches on top of that pipe. So we really sandwich it in. And it's, it's uh, when we do that, it's at a slope mm -hmm. that we want. That when we pour back concrete, we don't have to worry about the pipe moving. It's just going to stay in place. But then will you have a problem hooking up to the outside? No, no. We're very good at trying to get very good slope 
to the inside. Now, um, the cast iron, it does transition to the clay pipe outside of your home. Mm -hmm. So the, the only true way to get rid of all of your cast iron, you do have to excavate pipe on the outside at the foundation wall. Mm -hmm. That way you can remove that piece of iron that's going through the foundation and you just put in a piece of plastic pipe. Um, okay. So you're planning to do that too? To ultimately get rid of all the iron, yes. I'll show you the option to just stop at your foundation wall inside uh -huh. and the option to dig at the foundation because um, there's a little bit of a difference. Mm -hmm. Um, we do offer a senior citizen discount. Does that apply to you? It sure does. <laughs> it has for many years. <laughs> I, I never assume, so that's why I always ask. So. Dylan asks too, and I just laughed at him. <laughs> so what I want to do, are you able to see the footage on your screen? We're at 50 now. Okay, yes. So I'm going to get back to the cast iron pipe, uh -huh. and I'm going to zero out my footage.